Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to create a nifty little gallery slider natively in Cornerstone. So without further ado, let's dive in. First things first, let's take a look at how we have things set up on the back end. Here we have a custom post type. We've created an ACF gallery field and we've added images into that field here. So that is the base of what we're doing. And uh, I believe this is on test seven. So we do want to make sure that in the cornerstone builder here, we are previewing award test seven. So that's what we got here. We're in good shape. Now you could start with any container that you'd like here, but because I want this to be reusable, I'm actually going to hold down the command key here and start with a div. Now I want this div to respect our global container. So I'm going to select the div and I'm going to click on global container here. And I also want to make sure that our margin left and right is set to auto. So I can click this little button right here. And now we are in good shape. Now this div is going to be what unifies our gallery slider. And the reason we need something like this to unify it is because this gallery slider is made up of actually two sliders. We have a slider up top that is showing the selected image and we have a slider down below that shows us our full gallery. So let's jump back over here and within our primary gallery container here, we're going to jump over to customize custom attributes. And here is where we get to unify things. We're going to say data X slide context. So now everything housed within this div is going to work as one. And let's go ahead and just give this div a name. We'll call this thumbnail gallery slider. So now we want to create the hero image at the top. That's this one right here. So let's go into our elements here. We'll type in slider and we want a stacked slider. So we'll go ahead and drop that out here. And there we have our stacked slider. Now within this stacked slider, we do not need our slide navigation, nor do we need our default pagination. So we're going to go ahead and delete both of those. Then we also want our slide to fill the full width of this container. So we're going to click on slide container here, scroll down and where we have global container checked, we're going to uncheck that. And now you'll notice slide one takes up the full width of that container there. The next thing we can do is delete slides two and three because these are going to be populated dynamically by our looper provider, looper consumer setup. And so now let's go ahead and set that up. Let's get rid of our text here. Let's click on slide one and we're gonna jump down to the base slider element here. That's just where I like to house these. We're gonna go over to customize looper provider, dynamic content, click on our dynamic content, type in ACF, post field and select our gallery that we had set up there and click the plus symbol. Now with our provider set up on this hero image, we're going to click on the slide itself, click customize and click consume. And you'll notice nothing is happening just yet, but it is consuming. So now let's jump over to the primary tab of the slide. Now in this real build on the front end, I used a fixed aspect ratio of 16, nine here that takes another div and a little bit more work. So we are just going to stick with giving this some sort of minimum height. So let's just say 550 pixels minimum height on slide one, then we'll jump into advanced here. And on the lower layer, we'll select the image element. And for our source, we are going to open up dynamic content content type in looper and select current item. And now that is grabbing slide one from our gallery right here. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add a slider underneath this for our actual gallery. First, let's add a little bit of margin here. So I'm going to select the base container of our stacked slider add a little bit of bottom margin. We can now add our gallery thumbnail slider in beneath that. Now, remember this does need to be housed within the same root container that we created, which is this thumbnail gallery slider div here. So the easiest way to do this is to click on that div and then add the element directly inside it. So I'm going to click add element. I'm going to type in slider and I'm going to select the inline slider here. Now you'll notice that immediately adds it right below our hero slider up top. Now there's a couple of things we're going to do to style this and get it working. And obviously you guys can take this with a grain of salt and feel free to style this however you see fit, but there are a couple key components here. So first things first, we're going to select our slide container and we do not need slides two through six here because we are going to be using a looper consumer setup. The next thing we can do is get rid of our default pagination here. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Now on slide one, I'm going to delete this text as well. And here we have our base slide. 
Now we're gonna set up our looper consumer setup again here. So we'll click on the slide container, jump down to our slider inline, click on customize, looper provider, dynamic content, and we'll type in ACF and select that same gallery field that we used in our hero slider up top and click the plus symbol here. And then on slide one, we'll go to customize and click consume. And immediately you'll notice something is happening here. So just like we did with the hero section up top on slide one, let's select the primary tab, click on advanced and on the lower layer, we'll add the image element and within there for the source, we'll type in looper and select current item. Now things are starting to take shape. There's a couple more things we wanna do here. First things first, on the slide container here, we're actually going to use auto. But before we switch that over, while we're on paged, we're gonna set number per page to one. Then we're going to switch over to auto. You'll notice the formatting looks like it gets a little screwed up here, but that's okay, we're gonna come back to that. We also wanna set our gap to something kinda of small here because we're gonna use the scale effects. Uh, so let's go with 0.15. Now this is going to look weird right now, but it will come together in a moment. Finally, in our layout, we want to set the justify to center. Now let's jump down to our options. First, we want this to be a carousel. We want to allow the click interaction and we want this to scroll by slide. Now we can set the size of these thumbnails. And again, these are opinionated styles, so you could do this however you want, but we're going to select slide one here, and then we'll scroll down to our sizing preferences and under width, we'll type 150, and under height, we'll type 150 pixels as well. And now we're getting a nice little thumbnail gallery here. Now it is a little hard to see our arrow buttons there, so on the slide container, we can jump over to effects, turn on mask, and we'll do a linear mask here. And I'm not gonna get into the settings on that. We'll just use it default as it is. And now we wanna add some effect to the slides so that you can tell which one is being selected. So we're gonna select slide one here again, go into our effects, and under scroll effects, we'll add transform. Now we do wanna make sure that opacity is one for both the exit and the entrance, and we'll enable our pointer events. And then on our exit effects here, we're going to add filter grayscale 100% and transform scale and I'm gonna pick something arbitrary here, we'll say 0.75. And that's going to shrink things up a little bit here, even if that's not showing in the preview. Then on entrance, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to do grayscale equals zero and transform scale is one. So back to full size. So if we go ahead and save that and we view it on the front end, we will see that this is now functional, but I don't like this big transition slide that's taking place here. You kind of lose your focus. So we're gonna jump back into Cornerstone here. We're going to select the slide container of our thumbnail slider, scroll down to options and under transition, we want this to be a lower number than 500 milliseconds here. So maybe we do something like 50 milliseconds and you could kind of play around with this as you see fit. Now let's jump back over to the front end and refresh and now things are looking pretty good. It's going one slide at a time and what we do with our thumbnails here is being reflected in the hero slider up top. And the best part is you can select a slide with your mouse down here and it will go to that slide. So here we have this mountain scene. If we wanted the camping scene, we could click on that. If we wanted this ocean scene, we could click on that. And then we could go back to the mountain scene here. And there you have it. It is pretty awesome what you can do with just a couple of sliders natively inside of Cornerstone. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.